Good evening. Welcome to the uh, new year. August Ward meeting. New year, new beginning. I'm sure a lot of things have, uh, have happened. Uh, we haven't heard a lot of uh, hiccups, so it's been kind of good. So I'll turn it over to you so you can update us on the beginning of school. All right, very good. I want to thank all of the staff members who are here. We have some guests as well. And I want to thank Ms. Angel for being here. And I think that Mr. Clarency is going to join us in a little bit as well. And I, I don't think Mr. Pollock's going to make it today. But um, just want to prepare this board that we have quite a, a lengthy agenda. It is the start of school. And we've got some really important information to share and some important events coming up. But I think it's most important that we share with the entire community, but certainly with this board, what um, an amazing effort went into making for a great kickoff to the school year. Uh, I want to send a shout out to our transportation department who had a, a great effort and, and things are going much better. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Our maintenance and operations department have worked tirelessly to, uh, by the skin of their chinny chin chin, get uh, West Jackson Middle School teachers in and lots of hands on deck there. But the teachers have been amazing in terms of patient with some of the ongoing renovations that are continuing there. But most importantly, our leaders worked really hard to make sure our kids had a remarkable experience when they came in the door. So we've had a really, really, really good start. Um, still getting a little bit of feedback. Do we have to start on a Monday again? It was a long week. <laughs> we really got used to starting on a Thursday or Friday. But uh, there are a lot of folks within, uh, within the district and across uh, stakeholders that made for a really good start. And uh, that's kind of a reflection on where we've been the past couple of weeks. And equally important is where we're going in the weeks and months ahead. And I just want to remind the board that uh, Mr. Bryce Holcomb and is coming from City Court with Brian Sand from uh, for just a few minutes to share with us some information when we talk a little bit more about future planning and facilities. So um, they'll be in about 645 after we've gone over some other items. So. Thanks to all who made a, made for a great start and we'll move on. The one other piece that I have under superintendent's comments, um, we have done a tremendous amount of work uh, in preparing, as you all know, to submit the College and Career Academy application again September the 13th. Uh, we've had an Empower board who is meeting as we speak. I ran from there at Jackson EMC to over here and we are trying very hard to make the two boards and you all have been gracious and supportive of this effort uh, so I have for you there a training plan what I want the primary reason for this is for you to be aware that the Empower College and Career Board still is under the umbrella of Jackson County Schools Board of Education but they still get some training from the Technical Colleges and Schools of Georgia board training and that's important just so that they understand like you all do the role of the governance structure so this is a training calendar for you all to be aware of and just a reminder that that work is ongoing. Uh, Ms. Anglin was able to go with us uh, along with about 25 community members last week that toured several other career academies across the state. It was a great day. Um, it was quite a bus ride home at Poor Cats and Dogs and on a, on a charter bus, but we made it. Um, but we learned a lot and had some great conversation and the energy that is surrounding the Empower College and Career Center is exciting. So uh, this is just a reminder for you August, the, the next event for us, as you can see there, Monday, our board meeting will be at South Jackson, and I want to ask you to come a little early if you can. Uh, our most recent or latest MSP grant, the project is Project EPSMAR, and they're going to have the Jacksonian Aviation, is it the Jacksonian Aviation um, Museum? And so that should be a lot of fun. Those are our teachers that are sharing what they've done through that work, and so if you can come early, please do. They're going to have some displays and rooms around there. And then August the 21st, for returning board members and new board members, we're going to have a, a kind of an orientation training um, at, at 5.30 here, and so I look forward to that as well. And then, of course, uh, this is a busy month for you, board, and I apologize, but we are reviewing our strategic plan and kicking off the year with preparing for continuous improvement through SACS accreditation as well as other um, elements. But we are going to have our community conversations like we did, believe it or not, five years ago. Um, in 2013, we had those conversations, I believe, and we're going to do it again. And so these are the uh, dates there and the locations, and we will use a similar format so that we have trained teacher leaders who will ask critical questions, and we'll have someone who's facilitating conversation and someone who's taking notes so that we truly get feedback from our community members on what they value. And we're working towards building a community-based accountability system. So when we hear from our community what they value in their children's learning experience, and really the entire family experience, 
um, that we can build that in as a part of our accountability system. Test scores are important, attendance is critically important, the, the ABCs as we call them of, of school are important, but there's a bigger experience that we want to make sure we capture and that we are held accountable for and we value. So we look forward to those, those dates coming up. So that's an overview of a busy month ahead. All right. So at this time I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Nicholson and the teaching and learning team to share a little bit on our updates from student achievement. Certainly. So, Dr. Howard mentioned that accountability. One of, one of the components is uh, certainly the milestones. And uh, while Mr. Johnson is getting ready to share with you, I, I just want to kind of briefly um, remind us that you know it used to be that all we looked at was achievement. About six years ago, the state I really appreciate that they they shifted and said it's not just achievement. We also have the growth measures. And so, what uh, Mr. Johnson will share in a few minutes is how we're doing in regard to achievement and growth. And if you recall, uh, I think maybe two or three years ago, I used the analogy of running a race. And if all students are supposed to be able to run a marathon, they don't all have the same training, they don't have all the same resources, and preparing is, is you know, equally so. And that growth piece has been critically important because if you were to just, if we were all to, to say we're going to run a marathon at the end of this year, uh, A, that some of us would say, no, we're not going to do it. But if we were required to do it, we would all need different types of support. And, if we if we didn't measure our growth and we didn't we didn't work towards um, making incremental steps, then we would never get to that achievement. So what I'm getting at is that that benefit of having growth has been particularly beneficial for our teachers, so that they can measure whether or not a student is progressing along the way versus you still can't jump this high or you still can't run that this fast. And so what he's going to showcase is, as I mentioned, the achievement and the growth, but. You can't get to the achievement without the growth. And then what some folks mistakenly do is focus just on achievement. And if you just focus on achievement, then you're probably neglecting growth. And so if you've read the newspaper, um, you know, there's a story about relative comparison. We always value relative comparison. We want to be the best, the most sought after. Uh, and that was one way of looking at data. And, and Mr. Johnson's going to showcase two, two different ways. And you will see points of pride. And this points of pride completely align with the resources and the prioritization that you've supported with our math specialist and, and curriculum materials. And then you'll see some areas that we're not super um, excited about, but this is last year's data, so we already have plans for support. And last year, the board supported the, the uh, hiring of Amy Godfrey Literacy Specialist. And, and it's not that one person makes the difference, but one person to own that to really be able to support the teachers, provide professional learning. It has a big impact, and, and you will see that. So I want to thank you for supporting uh, professional learning. Thank you for supporting the, uh, the resources that we pour into it. We're, uh, when we share this as a conversation, so if you have questions, we're happy to answer them. But I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Johnson to, to briefly talk us through where we are. Well, and in terms of assessments right now, when talking about Georgia milestones in the spring, we um, administer 24 different assessments between elementary uh, all the way through high school. Uh, and fortunately enough with the state being able to give us some flexibility we're very happy to say especially for our eighth grade students that in the past had to sometimes double dip and take the milestones end of course and end of grade for those advanced level students the state's been able to get some flexibility under the federal ESSA waiver so those students won't have to double dip anymore and they'll only have to take one so if they're going to be taking the ninth grade equivalent in eighth grade they don't have to take the eighth grade version of that so we have several students that are able to participate in ninth grade uh, physical science, ninth grade algebra one, ninth grade English, and then they take the eighth grade um, social studies test. So uh, when we go through the data, you're going to see something uh, new this year, and I'll point out when we get there where the state's actually going to be compounding uh, that data. Uh, in the past, uh, the students would take both tests, but the only data that the middle schools could count from their CCRPI when that rolls out here in October, November would be the excuse me, the end of grade and not the end of course, which was actually where the accelerated students were taking those classes. So from a standpoint for schools, it's going to help them when we get around to that component of the measure. Um, as we shared with you back uh, or a little bit earlier in summer from looking at some of the preliminary numbers, we know that literacy is an area of focus and, and we've got a plan and, and working with those teachers and the resources to help support them. Uh, we have seen a good bit in math and uh, science and social studies. So. In terms of getting down to some specifics, uh, when we look at literacy, and we're going to take a look and we'll go to literacy, we'll go through math, science, and then social studies. Uh, you've got to break down uh, by grade level, by school, and just kind of frame this a little bit because this is a new way of us formatting the data. We've got the state of Georgia, 
by that grade level, and this dashed line represents for the state of Georgia is it levels uh, the distinguished and proficient level, your two highest levels of performance. In dark red, you've got level one, which is the beginning learner, what some people equate with the failure um, level. So what we're looking at and what we're focusing on is trying to increase the percentage of students getting into those top two levels. Um, so they're gonna be at that proficient or above. So also above each area, you can see the change over last year. So when we look at third grade last year to third grade this year. So when you look at elementary school, third and fifth grade across the board in Jackson County, uh, we have been able to see growth at nearly all schools and at Maysville they were able to maintain last year in third grade. Fourth grade is an area of focus for us for this next year and um, they've got a plan and they're working that plan right now. Um, as far as going on into middle school, um, <coughs> again, We've got some areas that we need to work, work with. We know in this, while the state saw a decline, um, and I apologize, that should be an increase of green right there on, on that one. Uh, but uh, we know West Jackson Middle School, for example, with Dr. Conway, she's already been working with those teachers. They've got a plan and they're working that plan to, to uh, increase that performance there for their depth. They're still in line with the state, but there again for them, they saw that backslide last year. So, Troy, clarification for the board, does this number include the combination? Uh, yes, thank okay. you. I just want to make sure. When we're looking at eighth grade, that is a combination of both their EOC and, and their the EOG. Okay. Good job. Great. Not good. Huh? What a very area of improvement. Um, in terms of high schools, if you've known, and, and if you look at the past couple years, ninth grade literature, has been an area of focus. Um, we've not seen the performance level that we want to see. And when we look, um, especially at our two high schools, we saw increases both at um, East Jackson High School with their 9th through 12th program and also Jackson County High School. And at the district, we saw a plus five increase by percentage points uh, year over year. So definitely a focus that we're working on. Um, when we're looking at our feeder schools in terms of looking at our East Jackson 8th grade and West Jackson Middle School 8th grade programs, uh, for example, at East Jackson High School, 100% of their kids were levels 3 and 4. Um, and those are 8th grade students that are already demonstrating a very high level of performance. And then at West Jackson Middle School, there again, um, they saw an increase year over year from last year as well. So, so Mr. Johnson, if, if you don't mind, so if you look at East Jackson High School 8th grade, it's got that zero over it. If you're looking at those, you think, well, that's not very good. Sometimes that year over year, even if it's held steady or to decrease, you have to look at how many are actually high up in the, the proficient and distinguished levels because if it's a decrease and we have an increase in the students at the beginning level, that's definitely not good. But if you're way above the state average and you, and you either hold steady or drop a little, but you're still way above the state average, that's still a celebration in our minds. And you'll see that with uh, some more of the high school data, but it's just a, a negative red does not always mean it's bad if you have high numbers of proficient and distinguished. Um, and when you look at what Mr. Nicholson was talking about earlier, where we've been able to put our math plan in place and the work of the teachers, Dr. Warwick, and, and increasing the instructional support over this last school academic year, when you look at elementary school grades three, four, and five, you see increases across the district. Uh, eight, uh, for example, in third grade, we saw an 8% increase at the district level. Fourth grade, we saw 9%. Uh, fifth grade, we saw a substantial increase. We saw 13% increase overall. And I want to point out with Maysville, for example, uh, in their fifth grade, they saw an increase of 35% uh, year over year. And they're considered, and when you look at them, and we know Maysville's had some areas of performance concern, uh, they're performing considerably over the state when you look at levels three and four, those two highest levels. So uh, definitely some points of pride when we're looking at fifth grade um, and what those teachers did. So. We know we've got some things we've got to replicate and also here again some areas that we've got to uh, focus on. Moving on into middle school uh, and looking at grades 6, 7, and 8. Uh, from a district standpoint in grade 6 we saw an increase. That's not always been the case. Um, at East Jackson Middle School we saw an increase of 12% and they're actually were showing performance above the state in levels 3 and 4. Um, that wasn't the case for us the last couple of years. At West Jackson Middle School, again, we didn't see a change overall, but we were able to maintain and are performing above the state. They, they want to and have a plan in place to greatly increase that, and uh, we look forward to supporting them with that work. 
Uh, in math, when we look at the system level, uh, we did see a little bit of offset. East Jackson Middle School's seventh grade went down a little bit uh, comparatively to where they were last year. Uh, West Jackson Middle School, we saw a nice increase there with an 8%. And then looking at eighth grade, when we look at overall um, and with the new calculations in place, um, Georgia saw an 8% increase overall. We saw a 5%. And then uh, at both East Jackson High School and West Jackson Middle School, when we look at the performance of eighth graders. Uh, and something else that I, I failed to mention is, you know, with East Jackson High School, this is the first year that eighth grade, uh, or I say first, last year was the first year where eighth grade uh, became a part of the high school entity. So um, there's some areas Ms. Palmer and her team are going to be working on to address um, and focus on, and that's one of their points of celebration. Going on to high school, uh, for the county, we saw an 18% increase in algebra one scores year over year. Uh, when you look at East Jackson High School and Jackson County High School, we saw some pretty substantial increases uh, comparatively year over year. A lot of that work to do in the MV3 program and, and the professional learning that the teachers have been working on and, and the resources that they put in place. Uh, geometry, uh, as Mr. Nicholson was pointing out, um, to just focus on the decrease of, of negative five, uh, and the change for East Jackson High School would be a misnomer because when you look at where the state is performing at 39% total at levels three and four, and then you turn around and look at them, for example, they have nearly 65% of their students at levels three and level four. So they did see a little bit of backslide. They're not happy about it, but when you look relatively at the state and where they're performing, um, they're, they're still well above their counterparts there. Going on to science, um, this is probably where we've seen the most amount of resources and support with the MSP program and grant year over year. And it definitely shows when you look uh, grades five, eight, and throughout. Uh, we had some of our highest performance there. We had 10% increases in grade five. Um, we had some schools like, for example, Gun Springs Elementary School and North Jackson Elementary School, we saw a 21% increase year over year for grade five. Uh, looking at grade eight, uh, East Jackson High School in eighth grade, we saw a 19% increase and we saw a 17% increase in West Jackson Middle School. So <coughs> definitely kudos to the teachers and, and administrators and uh, that team that's working with them. Uh, moving on to the high school, uh, physical science, we did see a little bit of a dip. We saw a 1% decrease year over year. But when you look at our middle schools and how they're performing at the state level, they're considerably above. Uh, Jackson County High School and East Jackson, their ninth grade programs are right there at the state uh, levels. Jackson County actually saw a 7% increase over where they were for last year. So they're, they're not happy with that level of performance, but definitely it's, it's a celebration for the increase and they're continuing to focus. Biology, um, we saw a, a large increase district-wide. Uh, East Jackson, here again, they saw an 8% decrease year over year, but when you look at where they are compared to the state average, um, plus, they've also done a good bit of flipping with their change in their model, uh, how they're supporting there. So I think give them another year or two and they'll have that uh, where they're even at a higher percentage rate. <clears throat> as far as looking at social studies, uh, again, grade five, we saw an increase and that's just a trend across the county with all the academic areas, 7% increase. Uh, Gun Springs Elementary School, they saw 16% increase year over year. Uh, we have West Middle. And, um, with an 8%, so uh, definitely been an area of focus uh, working with. In eighth grade, we actually saw a decrease there and that's something we're gonna have to work with and, and look at. Um, we've been put a lot of focus into the science. We've got to focus on the, the social studies. And then in terms of high school, uh, we saw a little bit of dip in US history year over year. We went down to 5%. Uh, we're right in line with where the state is, but you know that's we always want to be much better. So that's going to be an area of focus. In terms of economics, we actually went up by seven percent as a county. Um, even though at Jackson County High School we saw a four percent dip year over year, when you look at where we are, we've still got seventy-two percent of our students falling into that level three and four of the highest levels of performance. Uh, when you talk a relative state comparison, is right around forty-nine percent. So. Um, when we looked at this last year, we, we've seen much more growth um, in those 24 areas than we did sub subsequently last year. 
we just know, I mean, in, in terms of where our greatest area of support is going to be continuing to support with the literacy component and then also focusing on our social studies. But as we continue to increase our literacy and our reading, we're just going to see those scores go up in those other areas as well. So thank you and thank you for your support. Any questions? <laughs> Digested. <laughs> it's a lot of information, but it's the way that you presented this, Mr. Johnson, is very user friendly and understandable. And, and I think Dr. Warwick is here. I don't know where she is, she but is. you can see that um, where we've been able to provide support, it's having a direct impact. And Ms. Godfrey came on mid year last year. I think it's worth the board knowing that we had a lot of elementary teachers who came during the summer so for some very intense training and you all supported the purchase of some Montes and Fennell new materials and so um, I think we will quickly see some results um, just the support we've been able to give we are all reminded that we had a couple of years there where our teachers were bare bones with resources and so we're, we're in a very very good place now compared to where we were so I expect to see the same growth year over year next year in literacy so thank you very much the next item, I believe, is for me to explain, and this is just a, for you to have as a, as a copy, and I, I don't want to assume, but I want to request that you consider um, continuing our intergovernmental agreement with Foothills Charter High School at East High. Um, they, with, because they are a separate high school and a charter high school, they are now to a point that they will start paying us for their, the use of our building, and so you can see in here um, that they'll be compensating us this year. But it, we'd like to act on this Monday as an action item, so if you'll read through it, if you have any questions or concerns. They take up one half of one wings. They've got about six classrooms and an office space um, upstairs at East High, and they're very grateful for that, and they're <coughs> doing good work. So that's just an, an FYI. If you have any questions, please feel free to call, but we'd like to be able to continue that partnership that we have with them. And Mr. Nicholson, technology update. Sure, just because we, we did spend a good bit of money on technology, uh, on books, projectors, so on and so forth. Mike Summer is here. He and his team have been doing what, what they started last year, the technology caravan. So even though we have a ticket system that we use throughout the course of the year, they, they send a spreadsheet, that's a Google form, they send it out to the principal who sends it to the school, and they just all descend. It's, it's our, our media techs that are also at the schools, that they, they come to a, a school, and just knock out as many, if not all of the tickets uh, within a day or two. And that was proven to be very successful last year because there's nothing more frustrating than to have all these resources and not be able to use them. So kudos to, to Mike and his team. Uh, most of the schools, about 90, 95%, there's a, a East Jackson County High School has a, a few remaining issues and they haven't visited all the schools yet, but uh, it, it's really an innovative way of, of making that happen very quickly. That includes also the installs that they did on all the projectors, the deployment of all the one-to-one -one devices, the deployment of uh, elementary teacher devices. So they've been incredibly busy uh, making sure that our teachers really do have those resources and that they are functioning. Mike, is there anything to put you on the spot that I did not share that you would like to highlight in terms of technology? Okay, so. Again, because we spend a good bit of money on it, it's it's valued, it's appreciated. There's no doubt that the, the choice in the, in the, the devices has been uh, quite effective. The teachers are, are beginning to be able to use that functionality between just not having to plug into their their wall and be able to walk around. And uh, the next step, of course, is providing professional learning and training about how to use that. But getting it in their hands was the, the first step. So again, thank you for supporting that because I know that uh, uh, Dr. Howard mentioned. It wasn't too long ago that we were talking about reduction of force and we were talking about not being able to pull materials and the fact that now we're really close to having devices in, in all of our students' hands and we've refurbished, not refurbished, replenished all of our teacher devices. That's pretty uh, pretty magnificent that we had, we're having those same conversations so closely together. So um, it's, it's really a, a thanks to our building leaders and folks who are also just uh, Tighten the, the strings when they need to tighten the strings, but it feels good to be able to put those resources exactly. back in the teachers' hands. So. Where are we at at the one to one ratio as far as with the kids? How much further? We, we um, we're, we're more than halfway there. We're, we're kind of like the, even though this would be year three, we're more like we are, because um, at the end of last year it was like we were two and a half years into, uh, and that was because we were able to do that bonus round, two mm -hmm. months, turns out 500. Uh, and, and so we're, we're ahead of schedule, assuming that we can continue to, to support the teachers uh, through the, the grant process and through the lost mm -hmm. expenditures that they approve the board. 
feel very confident we will. And that's in 312, of course, we, we may need to figure out what, what we want to do with K2. Uh, but to well, start I was going to ask, when are you going to make the Tory All Teachers Committee fill out for the grant? We, we can certainly do that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd like to talk about it, <laughs> that we, we well, can. Well, one to one is not one to one if K2 is not it's, good. It's, yeah, it's one to one in 312. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I, I feel that probably second grade needs uh, Chromebooks. We've had some conversations, and that uh, a tablet of sorts is more probably more applicable. Uh, whether you need a one to one in a kindergarten environment or whether you need a one to two or three, uh, you know, kindergarten teachers would love your feedback and might disagree. But but um, I think I think second grade is pretty critical, and first grade is. Um, I mean, we'll we'll do it. I mean, we'll we'll do whatever whatever you support. We'll happily do, um, but. I think, I think with our rounds moving forward, we, should, we should yeah. likely would include second grade. We, we've heard that enough from folks that, mm -hmm. that would like to be a part of that. That would the the plan that we presented two years ago. The numbers were based on third through twelve, so that would. Right. But I, I could do some math to figure out whether that five hundred that we received that bonus round puts us like still right on track if we added second grade. That's seven fifty per day, Yeah, <clears throat> so we're, we're close -ish. Yeah, not, not far. Yeah, so, I mean, absolutely. Obviously, the three through twelve are critical. Obviously, so much of the work that's been done and emphasis for the certain second grade so yeah. be looked at too. Well, and if you wait till yeah. third grade for the keyboarding, I mean, it's kind of too late in some ways. Yeah. But we were yeah. trying yeah. to be good stewards and not too great. But yeah. I, I mean, we definitely would love to be able to do that. Without a doubt. So, when's your next next uh, program or plan that you're going to move for another five hundred or whatever? We 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 look at that. We would, Whenever Anna tells me that I can spend the money, we, we've got it. I mean, we've got that process in place that we do. No, we start. No. So, we, I mean, I'd, I'd like to do that this fall. Anna, when can huh? we do that? <laughs> when she gets to the financial reports. <laughs> she gets out from underneath the fairy. Oh, yeah. Just keep squeezing that turn. Uh -huh. um, right now, it's sort of as far as it was. Um, it is in, in for next year. We, we could just do it. Yeah. We've got it on an angle. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can look at other options. I think with the SWAS, I mean, that, that was the point, is that we could continue to pull from that. Just the timing. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the process, we, we can, I mean, we can turn it on immediately. Whenever we get the green light, we will do it. Absolutely. Okay. Again, thank you for coming in. On behalf of all of our teachers, we really appreciate it. And I believe next is Mr. Schultz, who's got the CTA program and core indicators and budgeting updates that you have a separate packet for. Yeah, I just have to put together real quick. Um, I think I've tried to keep it very similar the way we've done it through the past few years and stuff. Um, really, just looking at our core indicators first, this is something that um, comes from us to the state uh, through our con app and it gives us really the data of our, of our way our system's doing. Um, looking back over the five years, like if you're going through this, one thing before you begin, I guess, it's, it's, it's exciting. This is the first year we met every single core indicator that was in the whole bit, so which is a great deal. I don't even know since when. There was we was usually non trad or something like that that we had, but we have passed we went above and beyond on all of them. But um, some things that I wanted to point out that was kind of neat is when you're looking at it and you look at a, a participant is someone who's taken a CTA class, a concentrator is someone who's taken three classes, um, and it's usually like a pathway completer at that point. So uh, a lot of this data comes from concentrators. So it's those students that have actually taken three classes and done it. If you look in the information sheet, it still says a GHSGP, but it's now it's integrated tests and intercourse tests and all those different things. You can even see as you kind of go through the years, like on our data, how, for example, in language arts, we dropped down, I think it would have been like in 14, 15, that was when the tests all changed over again. But um, some really, I mean, it kind of follows along very closely. It's kind of neat that we get to see the milestone data that goes along with it. But if you look at language arts, we increased 8.53, um, which is a big jump, and you're really happy upon, uh, on that. But one of the things I was really excited about, I mean, if you look back on 
um, back in 13, 14, when Matt changed over, we like the whole system changed and our everybody just dive bombed. But from last year, we went up 15 points from last year, which is exceptional. Um, I commend the teachers. I commend the, the administrators. Some of the things they're even doing is doing um, input. I mean, really putting mathematics example in um, construction. They were doing things that students were applying their math, math skills. And that um, I I put that right on the teachers and, and I, I commend them for really putting the work out. Um, another thing is. Um, technical skill attainment. <clears throat> that is our EOPAs. Uh, those are another one of our letters and that's definitely put in there. It's in the pathway assessments. Um, one of the, these are actual national credentials um, where our students are going to be going out in the workforce with anything from um, something they can put on the resume that they've actually passed an industry credential going into those areas where they're studying. Um, to take an EOPA, they have to have passed, or they have to have passed three consecutive courses or a pathway before they're even eligible to take it. So uh, I commend them on that. Um, when you're going through it, when you're seeing student school diploma, that one gets a little bit confusing, but it's 100%, I mean, we're, we're there, that's pretty awesome. But um, graduation rate, when you're looking at that, I think it's something to really, be proud of it. We're at 98.5%. So that's for the students that um, actually go through a pathway or anything, they're 98.5% of their graduating from our high school. And it's really neat, and the one that I really love down below is the secondary placement. Because secondary placement is where students who leave high school, they're either going to advanced training, they're getting a technical college certificate, they're getting a four-year degree, they're going to the Army, or they're going straight to employment. So for me, when you're at 100% on those kids, that's, you can't say anything better than your programs, what you're doing right there. Um, so I, I was really proud of that. Um, on the back side of this page, I went ahead and then, of course, yay, we were happy. We went up to 21 or 20% on non-trad. Non-trad is really where you're saying um, females in construction. Um, you're saying um, male nurses. I mean, those are places that are not normally where you would see that many numbers. So if you're trying to look at the non-trad, but we are increasing. We're, to be honest, we, we bring in people. Uh, we have a, a female engineer teacher, yep. which is exciting. Uh, so when you can have that, I mean, it, it opens and welcomes. But, we will never turn anybody down and we will support anybody and everybody, whoever wants those areas, because it should be their choice what they're wanting to do. Mm -hmm. um, down below is some of the end of pathway assessments that we gave out this past year. Um, we still have room to work on some of these. I was very proud, I'll be honest, Jackson County did amazing. Um, we tried a couple new assessments um, at East Jackson, which really hurt some of our data. Um, because like you said, this is kind of a backwards design. Uh, a lot of times they will have the assessment and then you create the curriculum that will go along with it. We had the curriculum and had to actually try to find a national assessment that matched our curriculum. So we're still tweaking some of them. We're trying some new things. I mean, um, for example, uh, we tried this year for the, um, doing the certified medical assistant. Um, these are students, and we, we hit 50%, which at those schools. Um, but when you stop and think about it, I mean, we actually, we're talking, um, there's seven from East Jackson, and we had six from there. So we're talking, you know, 13 kids walked out of our high school with clinical medical assistance um, certifications that can go right to work in a hospital. So that's, you know, sometimes we look at the percentages and we're gonna, you know, even when you're looking at the total persist, uh, percentage from our system at 67% of all the students that take a pathway actually have passed. Um, that's 187 students um, that are actually getting credentials last year. That's not all seniors either. Some of those are sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, we, we had about just under 300 kids last year that actually walked out of high school with the credential. Um, we actually bought a, a cord that each one of the kids got that um, we were really proud to put those on those, but um, we're continuing. You know, the teachers, we've, been, we've 
encourage them. One of the things that they are behind are 68.44 four indicators. If they are not meeting that, then to come up with an improvement plan um, on how, what do we need to do, how can it, I, I told them, I said, I didn't want to know something we can just stick in a file and say that we did it. I said, I wanted to make a plan that will actually work to help improve your students. Um, so I was very excited about that information. Um, we'll keep working on that. I've also um, put in here an improvement plan deal. This past year, um, we actually went through our federal monitoring and, and risk assessment. Um, we had a great review. Um, we went through and they gave us great reviews on lots of different things. Some of the things that they sent to us, and I, I encourage you to please look through some of these things that we're working through, um, but these are things that they wanted us to work towards for the next review. Um, there were some things that really wasn't a negative deal, but it just helped us. Like for example, I mean Martha and, and man, we, we all worked on the CPI report very heavily last year after the review because we had a, a lot of help. So this isn't a got you type form. Some of it is, is really helping us and, and helping us get better all the way through. Um, on the funding piece, um, it was exciting. We got some um, good funding in terms of federal review uh, or federal Perkins dollars. We're pretty steady about a little over 50,000 really for Perkins funds that comes to us. Um, but we also get, um, we received close to just about $20,000 that we use to pay for the assessments that those students took for the end of pathway assessment. Um, some of those assessments are actually about two hundred and some dollars to actually take an assessment. Um, so when those students are having the opportunity to be able to take them and we're paying for them and things like that, it's a great, you know, it's a great service for our students in that. Um, some things to kind of, which I was excited about too, um, you know, work-based learning on, on the apprenticeship you'll see there, we get some funds for that. And I was looking back about five years ago, we had about 30 to 40 placements in work-based learning. Um, we're over 200 placements right now in work-based learning. So the students are really taking advantage. Um, some of those students that are actually finishing some of their credits early, they're taking advantage of some work-based learning opportunities. Um, they're going, a lot of them, what they do is they, they put the students and they match them to their pathway, uh, what they did in high school. We have a small percentage that actually will actually work within the schools and work kind of with teachers and things like that. Uh, I know one of the things we were discussing on pathways is, is maybe a teaching pathway down in the future. And we have a lot of students that like to do that. And, you know, this is something we might even talk about at the power deal because teachers are getting hard to find. Um, something that kind of came up in our conversation too is if we actually have some of our students uh, intern with our other teachers, we can identify some of those really star players and say, we want you back, okay, when you finish up. Okay, so I mean, it's some things to look at down the road. Um, also, you know, I'm excited. We um, received $48,000 on a capital equipment grant to redo the information technology lab at East Jackson High School. Um, this is one of those grants that actually is a computer. And, and um, we were using 12-year-old computers in that lab. Um, some of those, you know, it was, it was well needed. Okay, so this is something that's going to really help in there. Um, I'd love to do some for Jackson County, but we actually run, you have to meet standards in the classroom size and things like that, and Jackson County High School just does not meet those class size standards. Um, so we can't apply really for very much on there. Um, you know, one of the things that, and I'm going to, I'm proud of Jackson County. We kind of, we have a, Strong computer science and AP computer science AP principals program at Jackson County High School right now. We're hitting close to about 150, 160 students in those classes. Um, we had a little snafu right there before the um, beginning of the school year, and um, that is an area it's hard to find an instructor. Um, you know, we especially in short terms and things like that. Um, we are very fortunate on the other hand, and I. And I Appreciate really working with Pete and Jessica Raber and his whole team up there. Um, we were able to pull all the resources we got with Lanier Tech, and one of those guys knew a gentleman who actually worked at a university. And um, he, this gentleman right now, which we hired, 
is um, he has companies over in Europe that he's actually working for, or does all their stuff there. So he's like, I don't need a full-time job. Um, he can't, and he couldn't do a full-time job because he already had one. The school did a little bit of shit. Um, they were able to, and this is really where we were talking about thinking outside the box. How can we get in, um, instructors for the time we need them? Um, they took the students that were in the first part of the day, and they put all the students in fifth, sixth, and seventh period. Now we're talking close to 60 kids per period. Um, you know, one person can't teach that many kids at all one time. We only have a classroom big enough to hold 60 kids in Mexican high school. But um, what they've done is they have pulled in another teacher. So there is the actual instructor for the AP Computer Science. And, and he, is, he worked at a university. He did a lot of flipped classrooms. He did a lot of online. I mean, he's very structured. Um, the students love them too. I, I really enjoyed you kind of hear them laughter, you hear them talking. I mean, they're, they're already starting to create those bonds. But um, he's doing the instruction for a small group, and the other teacher is taking the other students to another classroom, and they're doing instruction in there. They're rotating, they're flipping, they have a schedule, so there's a lot that goes on there. In saying that, when you're talking 60 kids in computer science courses, um, I appreciate Mike. First of all, I mean, I've been begging, pleading that we only had maybe 25 laptops at one time um, that were working, and those were six years old. Um, and he's been trying to go through all of his, but a lot of the ones that we're looking in there are probably the same age or older. Um, we're, we're hurting, to be honest, on technology. Um, I, 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 I think I hear Todd asking yes. if, the, if the board or the district could help I'm him purchase help. some additional. No, the, the teachers and that stuff are the students really, yeah, the students, students are what needs. Um, we, I like to get computers just like the ones we purchased for Jackson for East Jackson to actually go into the computer lab at Jackson, Jackson County. So you um, needed sixty total. We oh, wouldn't yeah, do we sixty. Needed. We'll still. What we're going to do is we're going to make shift on the, the laptops, um, and sometimes they can use some other. I mean, because they're actually rotating through some of the different rooms. Um, and we'll be able to, what he can use on Chromebooks, because it's like a software or something like that, he'll use those. If they have to use specific laptops or something like that, um, we have enough for probably half of those, at least. But we're looking at probably about 36 computers is what he would like to have in the classroom, and then the other students would actually be rotated. And those would all rotate through using those computers, but um, it would be a as-needed type deal. That's something you and Mike could get together and have us some numbers yeah. for Monday night and take a look at that. Sure. Because I know, I mean, if we did the one with squad, if we could, that would be greatly appreciated. And it also, we've run in the past where we've bought different computers in different years and they go out of day or we can't buy anymore. And then you have to recreate a whole brand new image in itself. If you've already got the image on the ones that you would be easily, you'd have one whole set. So, the computers at each time that. they literally just came in and are sitting and are being imaged, so that's that's easy. We just got that quote. We can get one for thirty six and present that to you. Okay. About thirty seven, yeah. forty thousand dollars. It is. Say. Yeah. It is. We're probably. I, I mean, I, it's roughly right, just under thirty or under forty thousand is what it is today. Um, if we did get a grant for West Jackson Middle School Ag Program. Um, we're waiting right now for Steve McCune to get the letter to us from the state. Um, but we've actually got the funds. As soon as we get the letter from him, then we can go ahead and start spending it. I don't want to spend it until we get everything first. What's that grand total? That is for thirty-six thousand, and that will be for equipment. All the capital equipment grants are all just for equipment. Um, so uh, I've actually talked to Miss Moody, and uh, we're probably talking about some aquaculture labs, some I mean, different really neat things we can put in this, and really with. Um, Talking about STEM, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of things that they can do in the, that lab that really make it STEM based. So we're excited. Great. And I've been hearing great things also over there with the new instructor yeah. from there. Yeah. She's doing a great job. She's hit the ground running. She's a proud Jackson County graduate as well. Yes. We're proud of her. Glad she's home. Um, overall, I just want to say thank you. Uh, we've got a great group of CK teachers, and I appreciate the support. Um, and 
I don't have any questions. I did that. I run through a lot of that as quickly as I could. If I just had a quote for Monday night, we'll take a look at that. I don't see a reason why we can't look at that. Yeah, let's just take a look at it. Make an action item on that on Monday. I appreciate it. And I appreciate Anna too. She wouldn't return. Anna's not looking at me. She wouldn't talk to me earlier. She's not teaching our coach for her. Thank you all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, gentlemen. Timing is perfect. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. We're not quite ready, but this is a great break. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. If you don't mind, we're going to. Yeah, no, you're good. If you don't mind, we're going to continue on with a few more things and then we'll take a short break and get ready. So, um, thank you, Todd and Todd. And um, we, we certainly appreciate all that information. I don't want to, to rush, but I do would, would like to go ahead and cover our human resources before we move into SPLOS. If you guys have about a, just a couple yeah, of minutes here. Okay, great, great. We will be succinct. Well, I know you will, but we have some valued, valued guests here that I do not want to um, neglect. And so, Dr. B, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, the first thing uh, that I'll just point out to you is our enrollment overview. And uh, you'll see that in uh, July, well, let me just go back to May and let you know that at the end of the year, we ended with 7,684. Okay, so 7,684 students. In July, we were projecting to have 7719. So we looked at it. each of these months, we always look at the, the last um, school day of the month is where we get our totals from. And so since uh, August 3rd was the last uh, Friday of the first week of school, we, we used that date. And we had 7962 on enrollment. Now, some, uh, most of our schools have taken their no-shows um, out of the count, and so that has taken us down. So Martha has some updated numbers as of today, where we are. Martha so as of today, we're at 79.25, and that is with all no-shows having been removed. Um, so we dropped about, we've got 100, a little over 100 no-show students, um, but we've come back almost 50 back to that. So, you know, and they're registering students every day. Yeah, and, and, and more enrolling every day. <laughs> so um, I want to thank you for supporting the additional uh, teaching positions at the end of last year because that has made a tremendous difference at our school. Um, we obviously are watching a couple of schools very closely um, with their enrollment. As you can see here, um, we've had quite a bit of growth on the west side as we expected. Um, but right now, uh, Across all grade levels, we're looking pretty good in terms of our class size average. We, um, we have a couple of grade levels um, at two different schools that we're looking at, and so we'll we keep a monitor on that. Uh, but right now, they still have some room to continue to enroll students and not be what we would consider um, overcrowded. So increase of about 250 kids in a year. And I think that we'll, consider, we'll continue to see that growth. Well, I, I <laughs> would not be surprised if when we come back next month, we're over 8,000. I would absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. agree. The subdivision that's already in development by West Jackson yep. Elementary, and then the one at the corner of uh, 332 and Johnny Brooks going crazy. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, so he's getting six or eight a day. I mean, there's yeah. Yeah. And I, I've looked at where, you know, if we were to need to add a teacher at, say, a fifth grade classroom or a third grade classroom, um, I've looked to see if there are places within the district where we could um, move a teacher. And quite frankly, we've grown everywhere. We, we've grown everywhere. Yeah, every yeah. We, we don't have every a school. teacher that we could move. So, um, so the potential is there, but like I said, overall, we're, we're looking pretty good. Next is our personnel action list, and I would say that that's it's looking really, really good because we only have, with the exception of the ROTC position at Jackson County High School, which we're still working to try to um, find a solution uh, there, we have all of our other positions filled, and so that, that's a, a great um, place to be at this point, and 
as uh, Mr. Schultz mentioned, we do you'll see two names on here, both computer science teacher 50%, and that's because they are, are sharing that position. And I think it's a great way for, um, for Jackson County to explore some flexibility in how we schedule students. And so uh, we're going to see great things there. Um, and then the other position that I would uh, point out to you on the personnel uh, list is that we are um, recommending Cheryl Capone to come back 49% as a special project um, leader, working specifically with our student leadership team and um, also doing some work with our teacher induction and supporting mentor teachers. And that leads us into um, our, my most exciting topic of the night which is our new teacher induction program that we want to give you just a brief overview. So if I could ask um, some of our team is here uh, this evening to share with you, if you'll come on up. Um, we were very, very fortunate to have a wonderful cross-section of teacher leaders and leadership from our schools. Go on, come on around. Um, to, to work over the past year to develop an induction program for our Teacher, our teachers that are in their first three years. Um, so in addition to Dr. Katie Warwick, um, Ms. Shannon Day, and Ms. Kristen Howell, who uh, Kristen's a seventh grade uh, science teacher at West Jackson Middle. Um, Ms. Day is special ed team leader at South Jackson Elementary. Of course, you know Dr. Warwick as our uh, math instructional specialist. We also had uh, Amy Godfrey, who's our literacy specialist, as well as Donna Wilson, who at the time was an instructional coach and is now an assistant principal, uh, and Dr. Sharon, Shannon Lawrence, um, who is a high school agriculture teacher. Cheryl. And Cheryl. And Cheryl. <laughs> yes. And Julie Crouch. Yes. And Julie Crouch. Um, so those eight uh, individuals work together all year to really develop a, a comprehensive program that they'll share with you. And so you may be wondering why you see pictures of students up on the screen, but that's because that's what we're all about. And our core um, belief is that every student deserves a high quality education with a highly effective teacher. And so we want to do that by making sure that we are building on that foundation that they get when they come out in, in college. It doesn't happen magically. And so we have to take that foundation and then build on it. Um, so if you'll go to the, the next slide, just briefly, I wanna uh, share with you uh, some of the reasons why we wanna focus on new teachers. Even though it's our te the teacher's first year teaching and they've got opportunity to continue to get better over time, when those students go into that classroom, that's their only opportunity to learn that material. So we've got to make sure that we're getting these teachers better faster. And the way to do that is with a comprehensive induction and mentoring program. Um, the other reason is that our nation is experiencing this shortage of teachers. And over the past three years here in Jackson County, we have seen the number of new teachers that we have um, that we've hired. And by new, I mean with less than five years of experience, grow from about 16% of the new hires to about 28% of the new hires. Now that seems like a lot. It's still well below where our state and national average is at around 40%, but that's a lot for us. And it doesn't matter even if it was just 1%. We want to make sure that each one of those teachers is the best teacher that they can be. So the last reason is that we want to retain those teachers. We have about 40 to 50% of teachers that are leaving the profession in the first five years, and we don't want that to happen here in Jackson County. So for those reasons, we've developed this program, and I want to turn it over to our team now so they can share with you a little bit about that program. So, Dr. Hunt, I should really talk to you about the why. Why do we have this program? If you'll look at the graphic that we have up on the screen, this really gets into the logistics of the program itself. And so we came up with kind of a gradual release model. And so if you look at tier one, which is that top, that's focusing on our, our year one teachers, so our brand new teachers to the district, right? And so what we're asking is that each one of them will have a mentor. And the mentor will put them for 180 minutes a month. Why 180 minutes? That's what research says. That's what the numbers say that's what they mean. So we're pouring a little bit into those brand new teachers as well as our mentors themselves. And so here's the book that we've purchased for our brand new teachers, and it's your first year one. And so it's just kind of a survival guide. 
for them. And then we also, they need it, right? <laughs> no, we also purchase a book for our mentors because we're pouring a lot into them as well. And so this is Mentoring in Action. And so it's kind of a month-by-month -month guide for them, but there's also a companion website. Um, it's a cyclical program, and so they get to reflect at the end of every month and think about, okay, what are, what are our goals for next month? And what do we want to do to support them? But we're not stopping there. We also have a program set up for year two teachers. And so with year two teachers, they're going to work in PLT. And so we have an induction and leave for the preschool. And they'll work in PLT for them. Year three, it continues. And they'll stay with their mentors as long as they continue to work with them. And so Ms. Day and Ms. Powell are going to share with you kind of what the calendar looks like for that. So one of the things that um, our team really felt passionately about from the beginning was that everything that we did through this mentoring problem program, we wanted to be meaningful. Everybody from the mentor to the induction level teacher is obviously very busy and they're in the hustle and bustle in the classroom. And so whatever program we were implementing, we really wanted it to be something that they could take away feeling better about. And so um, throughout the process, uh, we always had surveys for our induction level teachers so that they could provide us feedback. Um, and then we talked one-on-one -on -one with them and with mentors. And one thing that we uh, found was that People were always very good intentioned when they signed up and said, yes, I'll commit to being a mentor, but there wasn't ever really a plan. And so a lot of times what we found out was happening was that the mentor would say, what can I help you with? And they'd say, oh no, I'm good. And then some, the next thing would come up and they would be like, oh, I don't know what, what's going on now, but it would almost be too late. Mm -hmm. And so we really felt strongly about one way that we could do that to help both the induction level teacher and the mentor teachers was to create a plan for them and we broke it down by month. Um, similar to how Mentoring in Action does, but we also looked at specific things to Jackson County. So, um, of course, the very first thing that a new teacher is going to go through is new teacher orientation at the end of July and we have a very specific comprehensive checklist that the new teacher receives as well as the mentor and it is everything from, I know how to get a key to my classroom. I know where to laminate. All of these little things that are not taught to you in college when you become a teacher. You know how to teach. You know the curriculum. You know how to differentiate with students. But who do I call when, you know, the ceiling leaks? You know, things like that. And so, um, so things like that. Right. Exactly. Um, right. So, um, we've got a very comprehensive checklist for the first uh, three days before school starts, the first week of school, and then we've got a month by month calendar that which was, copy which you have a copy, which was developed um, with experienced teachers as well as brand new teachers for what they needed. As you go through the year, these are again things you don't always learn in college. You don't learn how to do open house, you don't learn how to have parent conferences, you don't learn really. What do I do when it's December and grades are almost due and I have students who are failing? You don't want to catch them then, you want to catch them you know, when it begins in September or October. So our monthly meetings with mentors and mentees closely follow this calendar to hopefully help the brand new teachers through all of these non-instructional sometimes things that come up but might be the reason why teachers get overwhelmed and leave the profession. And mentors have already been through one training with us, and we'll work with them throughout the year and continue to train them as well. So once they are assigned a mentor, that mentor stays with them for those next few years mm -hmm. also? Three years. Yes. They're assigned to them for three years. Yeah. That's great too. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to note also that we're providing the support not only face to face um, by having some set times throughout the year that we'll meet with both the mentor teachers as well as the induction level teachers, sometimes separately, sometimes together, but we're also using Canvas um, to have a virtual uh, conversation with them as well. So those, uh, there'll be one for the mentor teachers as well as one for the induction level teachers. And we started that last year with the induction level teachers, so we're just building on that. And something that really helped us was to attend the induction summit in Macon mm -hmm. this spring. We got to learn from many different school districts as to how they came up with this process and how it's working for them. And we really probably talked to five different districts and took the best of what they did and made it into ours. Any questions?
We have a stellar team that developed this. These, you left extraordinaire off the end of each of their yes. ties. I mean, they, they truly are rock stars. They are, and for sure. And we, those, uh, we're very blessed here in Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Very good idea. Thank y'all very, very nice. That's awesome. All right. Well, that's it. And um, I will leave it to the pleasure of the board. Do you feel like you need a short break? Because we do have uh, quite a bit more to cover, and that'll get, give uh, our city court friends time to set up. Do you want to take a short break, or do you want to just sure. walk on through? Okay, let's take five, and then we've got, that'll give you guys a chance to set up, and we'll start with their presentation and come back. I do have